Hi, Pujita. Thanks for coming on the channel. And uh, I've been getting a lot of questions that uh, how's the scope of data science and masters in Canada. So I thought you would be a very good person to answer these questions because you're doing your masters in Canada. So again, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and to start with the uh, uh, this question and answer thing, uh, please introduce yourself a little bit. Like, uh, what was your bachelor's in and your work experience? So we'll start with that. Sure. Uh, so firstly, happy to be here and. Uh... So I am uh, Pujita Mata pursuing my master's in computer science at the University of Saskatchewan here in Canada. And uh, as for my bachelor's, I studied back in Bangalore, you know, at uh, BNM Institute of Technology. That, that's where Roshan and I met. So, so uh, prior to joining master's, I worked as a software engineer at Robert Bosch, the German-based company, for a little over two years. And uh, most of my work back in Bosch was about autom automating developer workflows and using Python and shell scripting. And I also got to work a little bit on Java and C++ and optimizing build and GUI optimization tasks, et cetera. <laughs> All right. Uh, so why did you uh, choose Canada? Any specific reason for your master's? So there are actually a lot of reasons why I chose Canada. Firstly, it's because I got a full scholarship at University of Saskatchewan, the university in which that I'm currently studying at. So um, basically, like the scholarship is good enough for me to take care of my expenses and also pay my uh, tuition fee out of it. So I haven't spent even a penny out of my pocket till date. So who wouldn't love that? So that, that's one of my, you know, major factors that I'm here. And apart from that, I, uh, so I did not just apply to Canada. I also applied for a few German universities and uh, I got an admit from, uh, I got admits from a few universities there. And if I have to compare the curriculum, it's something like this. So here at uh, USAS, University of Saskatchewan, I have a mentor from day one. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thesis that uh, so the same mentor is going to help me with my thesis. He's basically my thesis supervisor, and he would mm -hmm. also help me with any of the questions that I have from day one, ever since my you know master's course started. So uh, whereas the German one, even though there was not much tuition fee, because I guess Germany offers ways of yeah. those tuition fee, right? So uh, but I still had to spend some money out of my pocket to take care of my expense. So that's why like I chose Canada over. And that's Germany. a good reason. I mean, definitely. Uh... Mostly people say that uh, Germany is where you can study for free, but I think you can do it in other countries as well. It's just not many people know about that. I mean, there this type of yeah. course is there in UK as well. So they call it MRES, uh, so it's a research-based study. Uh, I looked into those courses as well, but the problem was I did not like the kind of project they were doing, and it was not flexible that like you can take up your own project and you can work on it. So you had to work on the projects that they had. So the universities where I was interested in, they didn't have uh, that kind of project which I was interested in. So I had to go for project base or uh, here they call it okay. masters. So mm -hmm. uh, that's why I had to take this one. And it's actually expensive one. So you have to pay the fees and all those things. But if you take a research based masters, it's actually quite cheap or sometimes it's Cheaper, totally yeah. free. So uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely an option to pursue in any other countries as well. And it's not just in uh, Germany. So yeah, that's a really good thing. And what is your uh, master's in like, what subject you are studying? It's master's in computer science. Okay, so in that you can- Thesis based, yeah. Thesis is deep, deep learning based. So in that you can choose whatever modules you like. Yeah, it's it's up to us, yeah. Okay, that's great, that's great. So what type of real world exposure did you get uh, as part of your master's? Okay, so here in Canada, like there are a lot of opportunities. And as a part of my master's, I, uh, I started my master's back in Jan 2021. So I'm almost finishing two, two years, but uh, I'm delaying my master's by one more term because I went on a two month break back in May, June this year because I got into the summer school. So uh, which is funded by Alberta Machine Learning Lab. It's a really famous lab here in Canada for machine learning research and also a few other machine learning institutes here in Canada. So uh, it was like an extensive machine learning uh, program where uh, people from all over Canada, like all those uh, different uh, people from different universities here in Canada, like uh, we were all taught uh, machine learning, deep learning and other stuff. And it, it was done by one of those, you know, uh, reputed professors mm -hmm. from Canada. So that's why I had to go on a two month break. Uh, apart from that, uh, if, uh, as for the real real time exposure goes, I am currently working uh, part time with government of Saskatchewan. That's the province that I live in. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I work as a data analyst part time for those guys uh, where I'm trying to support this northern alcohol strategy for Saskatchewan province. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's another real time experience. And my thesis alone, like it's funded by Canadian government. So that's another exposure that I yeah. have come across here in Canada. That's a really good thing. Canada, UK and countries like these. There, uh, we get a lot of uh, practical knowledge and uh, here everything is project-based and all these universities have collaborations with some of the bigger 
companies like for my university they have collab- they have this uh, building called the catalyst in which there mm-hmm. are so many companies they are doing data or machine learning based research work so there i was able to find my internship and uh, that project i took it as part of my dissertation as well so uh, when we come here and when we see these kind of collaborations that uh, universities have that we get exposure to those kind of things and we get to make connections and uh, from that we can find a lot of opportunities as well so yeah that is one thing which i really like about uh, canada as well like you told and also uh, here in the uk i was able to work on lots and lots and lots of different projects which were actually live projects and they were under research uh, in different organizations so yeah that's a, a really good thing to do uh, now if we move on to the assessment part like how the assessment is being uh, done in your course uh, so as a part of my marks is like uh, so it it again depends on the university and the curriculum that university comes up with so my master is in computer science like as a part of my curriculum i just had to do four courses and i would spend my rest of my time on thesis so let's say a student would take about two terms to finish up those four courses so um, the four courses that i took uh, there was probably this one course where i had an open book exam where we were given three to four days to finish up that test and apart from that i don't think i had any exam for any of the courses and uh, most of my courses had project that i had to finish up by the end of that course work and uh, probably make some presentations out of it so mm-hmm. that's how my course has been if we look at like courses from other universities so they do have exams like a few uh, it again depends on the instructor if if instructor likes to conduct an exam they would conduct an exam or okay. open book test and stuff like that all right uh, so again the assessments are also very practical so that's a really yeah, good yeah they thing. were very uh if we talk about a little bit about living expense and stuff in general how is that so that depends on the city that uh, mm-hmm. you live in so uh, my university it's not in one of those big cities here in canada mm-hmm. it's um, so uh, it my expenses are a bit cheaper compared to other uh, cities but let's say if you go to toronto or vancouver so your cost of living is definitely going to be high your room rent is going to be high so if i have to speak in terms of numbers like a single uh, if you want to have the entire bedroom to yourself it would cost you like in saskatoon the place where i live it would cost me like 600 six, uh, 600 bucks whereas in toronto and vancouver like you might not be able to get a individual bedroom for yourself for just 600 bucks you might have to spend around 1k or you might want to share that room with another person to cut down on your expenses mm-hmm. all right but groceries and stuff like that it's it's they same stay same. yeah yeah that's the same case here as well i mean i'm li- living in newcastle right now and newcastle is one of the uh less expensive city is here in uh, in the uk so here i am living in this room where i am paying rent as uh, 450 pounds but if we convert it into canadian dollar or even dollar i think it will be equivalent so uh, so that's the case but if i move to london or manchester or bristol those bigger cities uh, there the rents are actually expensive so one of my friends she is living in uh, bristol so her room is relatively smaller than mine but she is paying like 650 pounds for that room that's expensive if, yeah that's expensive and if you go to london then it's even expensive if you want to get room something like this you will have to pay around 800 pounds or something i mean you might be able to find something but it will be really far from the city center so yeah uh, rents are actually expensive here as well but then salary also varies depending on the region so while we are talking about yeah, salary how is the job market in the in canada the job market here is uh, really good like right now i am looking for opportunities and uh, there are like a lot of opportunities here in canada and in fact like during covid a lot of us companies have opened uh, opened up their branches here in canada and uh, they're offering like remote jobs like companies like godaddy and the company mm-hmm. so uh, the job market wise it's there are a lot of jobs like be it in data science domain software domain mm-hmm. uh, security networking so there are lots of lots of lots of opening right uh, but yeah i mean we see there are uh, lots of opening but then there are applicants also who are applying for those uh, jobs so in terms of if we talk about in terms of competition how is the competition because if i talk about uk uh, the competition is too much uh, whenever i go to linkedin and if i'm seeing some job posting if the job is been posted for at least let's say 1 hour or something i can easily see 50 people have already applied for the oh. job and if it is up for like let's say one day to one week then definitely there will be more than 100 people who have applied for that job so the one which i have got uh, now uh, for that it was open just for like two days or three days i guess and more than 50 to 60 people had applied for that so that's the thing and most of the companies uh, they are trying to get people uh, who are either local or they don't need sponsorship so that's oh, the thing okay. but what's the situation in canada 
So as for the job postings and the number of applicants number that we see on job posting goes, it, the numbers are similar to as what you've mentioned for UK. So it's probably like in six hours, there would be 200 applicants who would have applied mm -hmm. for that job. So it again depends on the kind of company and profiles, like for a software engineer or data science uh, job posting, the uh, competition is like really high. As for the visa goes, so a two-year master's degree is going to fetch you a three-year work permit. So uh, that's why like it's, uh, I don't think visa has been an issue until now, like I applied for around 20, 25 jobs and visa was not never an issue. And I guess all they asked me was like, are you on study permit or would you need like sponsorship once you graduate and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, start working for us. But since we would be getting a three-year work permit, I don't need anybody's uh, sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So that is not a problem here in Canada. I think if you do a one-year, there are a few one-year programs as well. I'm not really sure, but I think a one-year program here would get you a one-year work permit as far as I remember. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so... Uh, the thing is, I mean, if we talk about PR also, so your work permit that you get for like three years, it uh, counts towards your PR as well, right? Yeah, yeah. but that, that's the problem in, in the UK. So we get uh, two years of uh, post-study work visa, but those two years are not counted in those oh. five years that you need to be in a country to apply for PR. So you need to be on a tier two visa or a sponsorship uh, job, mm -hmm. uh, and that is only uh, will be counted. As. So the study year which will be one year and if you take post-study work visa which will be another two years so those three years won't be counted and after that if you get a sponsorship uh, from that it will start and you have to be in the uk for five years but if you get okay. a sponsorship right after your masters so your masters won't be counted as usual but if you get sponsorship right after your masters so from there five years will start so that's why okay. most people want to get a tier two sponsorship as soon as they finish their uh, masters but uh, for you i think it's better like uh, you can you, your yeah. post study work visa is also counted as uh, relevant in here. fact like your master's degree alone is going to fetch you like uh, decent points like mm -hmm. a canadian master a degree that you got here in canada mm -hmm. is going to give you some points towards your pr and uh, if you work here a canadian work experience is also mm -hmm. going to give you some pr points and there are actually like other ways to get faster pr so Basically, there are these promises, like, for example, the province that I uh, live in. So uh, they're trying to attract more people and getting a PR here in this province is like definitely easier and faster than other provinces like mm -hmm. Ontario and other provinces. So uh, that is one thing. And there are actually like, a lot of benefits here in the province that I live in, like in Saskatchewan. I don't have to pay for health insurance, like even uh, international students have like free uh, health care here. So mm -hmm. these are some of the benefits that you know it kind of varies from province to province since Saskatchewan yeah. has been really really good to us doing us free health care so far yeah that's a good thing I mean so if we talk about like PR and stuff so definitely I think Canada has an upper hand over UK for sure yeah definitely yeah there are a few more questions which uh, people uh, have asked me what's the scope of data science specifically for data science in Canada Okay, so I am actually looking for both data science and also software jobs because I really enjoyed back when I was working as a software engineer back in India. And I've been heavily focusing on like data domain in the last two years. And mm -hmm. so that's why like I want to apply for like both data mm -hmm. science and also the regular software jobs. And uh, as far as the opportunities goes, like in data science domain, there are actually like a lot of opportunities. And it also kind of depends on uh, when you start applying for those jobs. So basically a lot of companies here, like say Rogers, Bell, Tellers and companies like that, they have this new grad hires that happen, like say I am graduating in next year, April, hopefully. So uh, if I graduated, so I can, I'm right now applying for this new grad hires where the interview process is relat relatively easier and mm -hmm. they would have these rotational programs where again, this data science domain again has like, you know, data engineering and data science, data analysis and a few other roles, right? So you get to try out like all these roles for a period of one to two years. And yeah. if you like, if there's this particular field that you like within data science, like you, you can choose that like so that's something that a lot of companies have been offering lately so if if it interests you please just look uh around this time like most of the companies would post for some jobs around this time so mm -hmm. I, I i mean i've been applying for a lot of companies i think i would have applied for at least 15 to 20 companies under this category where i get mm -hmm. to try out like different uh fields that's the same case here also uh, they call it as uh, graduate roles so the first mm -hmm. offer that i had it was a graduate consultant developer where they would uh, put me in some sort of training like preliminary training for like six seven weeks or something like that and uh, after that they will put me in some team where i will be working on certain project then they will put me in some other team where i will be working on some other project and there i will get experience from all the different domains and uh, then i will be able to choose which one i like and then i can yeah. go to that so yeah i had that uh, that type of offer but uh, unfortunately they had to move my joining 
a little bit later. So then I started looking for something else and I was very much uh, focused on data science specifically, not even data analysis or something like that. Right. So yeah, I started applying and uh, now fortunately I have another offer. So hopefully I'll be joining soon. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to another question, which uh, is master's or PG diploma for someone who is from non-IT background. So which one will be easier for someone who is from non-IT background to get in? So that kind of depends on the university. Like I really don't have a lot of experience in this arena. So, but I can speak in terms of like a few friends. So I have this friend who is, uh, I guess, in a EC domain, but she is currently doing masters in computer science at Northeastern University. Mm -hmm. So uh, to be eligible for it, I guess you should take a few computer science undergrad courses because you are mm -hmm. in a different uh, department altogether in during your undergrad course. So I also have another friend actually like in my uh, university who is from electrical or electronic. So uh, he was studying in like Manitoba in, in a different department, but then he wanted to get into data science, uh, computer vision and, you know, deep learning field. So he is doing master's in computer science. But so, like I said, as a part of my master's coursework, I just had to do four courses. But since he was coming from a different background altogether, he had to do two or three more undergrad courses uh, just so that he could, he could get mm -hmm. along in this computer science degree. All right. Uh, I think we also have something like that. Uh, there is a specific term which I am not able to recall at this point. So they have to, if people are coming from some other background and if they want to take a certain module, so their course start a little bit earlier, let's say a month or so earlier, and then they take a few modules which will yeah. make them well versed with the computer science technologies and then they can progress with the course if they want. Uh, they, are, they call yeah. it as, uh, they are called it as conver conversion degree, something like that. I think here a few universities call it as aligned programs. I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure, but yeah. there are actually like a lot of universities that are willing to take people from other departments. So as for the question, like the actual question goes, if it's, uh, if it's easy to get into a diploma program or a university, that is something that I might not be able to answer mm -hmm. because I haven't really done that research, but I, I did not really come across anybody who was doing diploma, honestly, but as for the university goes, I have seen people like from mm -hmm. other departments. I think, really, like, yeah, I think they can computer science. Exactly. I think if they can get into master's, they can definitely get into PG diploma also, I suppose. Exactly. So yeah, yeah I think it is possible. And also if there is some doubt, I think they can go to the university's page and they can see exactly. if they are eligible, I think they can apply. And after that, yeah. it totally depends on the profile, uh, what type of profile they have and what competition they have in that application process. So I think it's uh, that there. And then the other question is how they can improve their profile uh, so that they can stand out uh, in the application process. I guess having a few projects in the computer science domain, let's say if you're trying to switch to computer science domain, having a few projects like coding projects, learning a few coding languages and the certifications that you just mentioned, uh, those certifications should mm -hmm. definitely help overall. Like they, they would help you in building your profile. And ultimately, if you have a really good profile, you have a higher chance of getting into a university. So yeah, working so if, towards yeah. your profile would definitely help. Yeah, so if they have uh, some certificate from Coursera or maybe Udemy, I think that should help them to build They're all very helpful, yeah. yeah. And uh, the last question is, uh, is getting visa or master's in data science easy uh, for someone with no experience? As far as I know, like there is no such thing as getting visa for this course, is it easy yeah. or not. As long as you have an admit, you should be able to get, we don't even have a Canadian uh, study permit. Like you don't even have to give the visa interview that you would give for other countries. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it shouldn't matter if it's a PG program or a university program to fetch your visa. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, same is with the UK as well. Uh, but then if you are going to some university which is lower ranked or rather I should say which has very less fees, uh, generally UK VI or uh, let's say uh, visa officer, they try to conduct some sort of interview to see if you are a genuine candidate or not. Because here in the UK, uh, I have seen like many people come to those uh, cheaper universities just to get into the UK. And uh, okay. then they start doing something else. They don't really focus on their course because anyways, they can stay here for like a year for course and uh, then two year PSW. So they start doing all those kind of things. Uh, so yeah, just to avoid those kind of things, they conduct uh, some sort of interview. And uh, yeah, so it's important uh, that if you are going to some university, you have to be a genuine candidate for sure if you are coming to. Yeah, I may have heard of something similar when it comes to like Canadian visas as well. Like let's say when you're not from a good university, uh, it might, there might be some trouble getting visas, something mm -hmm. that I've heard, but I haven't experienced and I did not come across yeah. anybody who experienced those with you. Yeah, same here. I mean, I did not get any interview calls or anything. And my friends who are coming to UK now, even they didn't get any interview calls or something. So 
uh, it's like that. I think it's very rare, but it happens at times. So yeah. if you are a genuine candidate, I think a candidate, I think you should not be worried about all these things. But uh, if you are not a genuine candidate, then that's a completely different story. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, these were the questions, and uh, thank you so much for answering so patiently. And if you have any general advice that you want to give to people if they want to come to Canada, like things they should keep in their mind and uh, some pointers which they can uh, use to make most out of their masters, so that would be really helpful. Oh yeah. So actually, the one thing that I tell people is like Canada has very limited universities. It doesn't have a lot of universities like the US or Europe. UK so as well, yeah. don't yeah. So don't filter out your universities like initially. Try and you know apply for as many universities as you want, and then based on the admits, you can filter it out later. So do not filter it out initially. And apart from that, you network as much as you can. So it's it's you, you have a better uh, chances of getting into a good company based on the network that you have. So something that i would advise everybody to do so i think that will do and a lot of questions have been answered so i hope people will be able to make their decision now i think yeah hopefully so thank you so much for uh, joining and uh, i hope you will be finished you will be able to finish your uh, course really soon yeah hopefully bye everybody. all right bye bye bye